men are flying off the shelves. A police officer remains in intensive care after a patient with a history of ice addiction allegedly stole his gun and shot him at a Sydney hospital. The attack has reignited the call for increased security for our emergency doctors. We have the president of the Australian Medical Association, Dr Brian Alley, here with us this morning. Thanks for joining us, Dr Brian. It's a pleasure. Uh, we are here at a crisis point now, aren't we, in terms of security? I mean, this is starting to get out of control. It's a very alarming story yesterday. Very alarming and uh, it actually could have been a lot worse than what it was obviously. Uh, we know that violence in our emergency departments has been a problem for our doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers but this new problem of ICE uh, has really raised the level to uh, a greater height and uh, uh, the drug really causes people to be uh, very difficult to control and particularly when they're in these episodes of uh, psychosis and so yes we do need to review the security in our emergency departments to make sure our doctors and nurses are well protected. So we now know that ICE is really the leading cause of a lot of this violence. What, what is the situation when someone comes in and they are let's say they're very high, they're having a high reaction to this drug of ice. What do you guys do? What do you have to do and what is your, I guess, your protocol on this? Well, that, that will vary by hospital, obviously, and it depends on the patient's particular circumstances. I mean, violence in emergency departments is not new and alcohol has always been a major factor, but the new drug ICE means that people are even more difficult to control than previously. It usually means that we need to have the help of our security guards to control people and sometimes restrain people uh, until we can actually uh, sometimes sedate them uh, for their safety uh, as well as the safety of the healthcare workers and, and the security as well. So how can we better protect protect our doctors and our paramedics. They're the front line here. Well, they are, and I think we need to make sure that we review the security, uh, particularly make sure that there are ample security guards in our emergency departments uh, and that there are rapid response teams that can subdue people uh, when they uh, are in these sorts of situations. Uh, the calls for people to be armed in our emergency departments, I think, is a very bad way to go. Uh, we need less guns, not more, in our society, and as we saw uh, through this incident, uh, uh, it actually raises the dangers uh, for people, uh, including the doctors, nurses and other patients. So you don't believe we should be arming security guards in emergency wards? I think that's a very dangerous path to go down and I think this incident illustrates exactly why that is. Uh, what we need to do is make sure that we have ample security, that we have the proper resources so that we can protect our doctors and nurses. That doesn't mean more guns. We need to look at other ways that we can protect them. All right, Dr Brian Aller, thank you so much for coming in today. So